Hello, this is Juliana. As you all know, the state of California has a law that requires withholdings on all sellers who sell their California properties uh, as a prepayment of their income tax on the game. I covered all this in part one. In this part two, I would like to bring up 10 of the most commonly asked questions. And of course, if you have any that I did not cover, please be sure you leave your questions in the comment or community sections and I will respond to them. So let's go ahead and get to it right now. Before I do so, let me go ahead and go through the disclaimer with you. The information contained in this video is only intended to provide a guide in the various transactions to which the information is applicable. No representation is made as to the legal validity of the information or the adequacy of it in any specific transaction. The information contained should only be used after consultation with your legal and financial counsel. So question number one, I don't live in California and I don't file California income taxes. Does withholding apply to me? Yes, it does. The law is to make sure that all who make money selling California assets actually pay the tax to the state on their gain. So this includes residents, out-of-state people, non-residents, and foreigners. Question number two. I and my four partners own a property with a sales price of 750000 How will withholding apply to each of us? First, we need to decide how much interest you all own. Then, if the withholding is based on the standard 3.33%, you figure that the total withholding is going to be 24,975. So once you've calculated the percentage interest that you own, you have to multiply that to the 24,975 and you will get the amount of your withholding. Simple, right? Question number three, I am selling a property with a partner. Now this is his principal residence, but it's not mine. How do we calculate the withholding? Again, you need to determine how much interest each of you have. Your partner can claim a principal residence exemption on his share, but if yours is not a principal residence exemption, then you're going to need to pay withholding on your share. Question number four. I don't live on the property, but my partner does. Can I transfer my ownership to my partner so he claims principal residence exemption and there is no withholding? Okay, well, this is a little different. This is a question that you should direct first to your legal and financial counsel. A person can transfer the property to anybody they want, but you have to think about this. If the property was listed on your tax return each year, then the Franchise Tax Board and the IRS actually is going to question what happened to your interest in this property when you, do, when you file your income tax returns at the end. And if they don't see that your taxes, uh, that your property is not listed in your income tax return, they may have a question for you. So that is something that your financial and legal counsel should advise you on first. Question number five, why do I need a tax ID number? Well, without a social security number or a tax ID number, any claim of the required 593 form is void. The withholding of 3.33% will be automatic. However, without the tax ID number, you can still do the alternative withholding claim. But if you think about this, this, if you don't have a tax ID number and we send the alternative withholding to the state for you, how are they going to locate it and know where to put it against? So of course, it is best for you to get the tax ID number and submit it at closing. Question number six, what if there are multiple sellers in one transaction? Well, if the total sales price is under 100000 
then the exemption is going to apply to all sellers. But if the sales price is above 100000 then each seller will have to complete his own 593 form. He's going to show his own percentage interest on that form, and he is going to check to see if any of the exemptions would apply to him. Question number seven, what if there are multiple properties in one transaction? Now, if the total sales price of all the properties sold in that one transaction is less than 100000 then no withholding is going to be necessary. If the total sales price is over 100000 then the withholding will apply if no exemption can be claimed. What if I owned a four unit apartment building and I live in one of the units? Will there be withholding? Yes, there will be, but you need to consult with your CPA first. There will be withholding on the units that are considered a rental, but there will not be any on the unit that is considered your principal residence. So you need to determine the percentage that you're going to allocate to the rental and to your principal residence. You need to complete two 593 forms, one for the residence, one for the rental. And then of course, in each, you're going to mark the appropriate exemptions for each. Question number nine, what if the property is under a trust? If this is a revocable trust in which the original trustee used the property as a principal residence, then it is exempt. If not, then you must look, look for other exemptions to the withholding that could apply to you. Question number 10. Will the escrow agent verify that the exemptions taken are correct? Two parts to this answer. First part, no, the escrow agent only verifies that the 593 form is completed correctly and signed. They do not verify if the exemptions are true or valid. However, Remember, the form itself is sent to the FTB and they may verify if the exemption is correct. Part two, it is the seller's responsibility, remember, to complete these forms correctly with their own legal and financial advice. However, if the escrow agent has specific knowledge of inaccuracies in that form, then they have the right to not accept this form and ask the seller to resubmit. Today's t-shirt is my debt to the City of Hope. As you can see, I have my City of Hope t-shirt on today. The City of Hope is a medical organization that specializes in women's cancers. My mother was a patient there at one time, and I will be forever grateful to them. So I wear the shirt from time to time to show my support and appreciation. Thank you for watching. Please like me and subscribe. Check out additional links that I have below in the description. Be sure you check out the Federal Foreigners Withholding series. And of course, I will see you the next time around. Thank you for watching.